Hey everyone, welcome back to our winter home safaris. I'm Melanie, I am Isla's keeper. Um, we also have Tammy over here, another one of our keepers. Um, and Isla is a Southern Tamandua. And that's just the fancy common name for a, a um, lesser anteater. Lesser meaning smaller in size, even though she is great to all of us here at the zoo. Um, she's one of our personal favorites. She has a lot of personality and um, she's a wonderful ambassador animal. And so what that means is she meets a lot of people here at the zoo. And so she works in close contact with all of her keepers and is very comfortable working with people. Um, and so we actually have some exciting news we're gonna tell you guys in a few minutes. Um, but right now we're exercising Isla. This is a common thing that we do, especially while it's snowy out. Um, she's from Central and South America. So she can be a little bit sensitive to the cold weather of Ohio, um, but we still make sure she gets lots of exercise and she loves to um, do training as well, which is a mental exercise, just like you guys doing schooling at home. So she's very smart and does training, um, kind of like your dogs and cats at home, um, but she actually loves to eat worms. So that's what she is working for today. Um, and she's even begging too, kind of like your dog at home again. Um, and you'll see she has some really sharp claws on her front hands. Maybe she's gonna climb that. She is arboreal, meaning that she climbs trees um, and they do walk on the forest floor. So she is very agile, whether she's up high or down low. Gotta make sure she has her manners with our chairs. Um, but she uses those claws because she does not have any teeth like a lot of animals do. So um, she walks a little bit on the sides of her hands so that those uh, claws stay very sharp. And she uses them to cut open um, little tiny holes into a termite mound so she can stick her long sticky tongue down there and lap up hundreds of thousands of termites to fill that belly. So she does love insects. And um, later on, we'll be giving her a little bit of a slurry kind of like a protein smoothie, and that's another thing we give her here at the zoo. All right, we're gonna see if Isla wants to wander on over for the next part of our home safari that's going to also include the, uh, the reveal that we have. Pick up. And again, Isla works very closely with her keepers, so she's very used to being handled by us. And we are going to be doing an ultrasound to show you guys the baby that Isla has in her belly. So that's our exciting news. We're going to have a little baby Tamandua coming in the springtime or in the summertime. So we did already know that she was pregnant. Um, she got pregnant around Halloween. And so the baby is about three months into development and their gestation period is about 130 to 190 days and she goes about 160 days and we know that because this is her third pregnancy so you can see her long tongue lapping up um, it's actually chicken flavored baby food believe it or not dr watusik do you want to tell us a little bit about who sure. you are and how you got to be a Tamandua ultrasound. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm a researcher over at the zoo's Center for Conservation and Research of Endangered Wildlife, also known as CREW. Um, and if you look actually on the screen here, I'm going to try to get it back in focus. Uh, what we have here is a little baby Tamandua. <sighs> it's hard to distinguish. Hold on. Let me see if I can get it better. She's Every time she wiggly. moves, it makes it a little bit hard. Mm -hmm. um, you can kind of see uh, some ribs starting to form, those lines across the top. And every time she sniffs, you can also see it happen too. Um, and we have the head of the baby right down here. Um, yeah, so anyways, um, yeah, I don't know. I <laughs> came into crew to work with rhinos and they work with polar bears as well. Um, and uh, the team at 
like our Eastless team asked me if I could come do some ultrasounds. So we've been doing them pretty regularly, once a week as of late, uh, to keep track of how the baby's doing and how it's progressing in its growth. Um, I never actually had seen a Tamandua before. I started ultrasounding her back in the days of um, her pregnancy with Manny. Um, but they're pretty awesome animals, if I do say so myself. Um, yeah. So the ultrasound, if you're interested, works by generating sound waves, and the sound waves will travel through this probe um, to the belly of Isla. And then the sound waves bounce back to the probe and the machine can read them. So if the sound waves get absorbed by a fluid, you see black on the screen. And if they bounce back from something that's very dense, like a bone, you'll see white on the screen. So that's how it generates pictures. We have a couple questions from some viewers. Missy wants to know, do tomandos ever have twins? You ever heard of that? Uh, not as far as I know. I don't believe that they do. No, they generally have one at a time. And Michelle wants to know, do tamandos smell? Yes, they um, do. <laughs> Thank goodness you're not smelling her. <laughs> um, our I'm, male especially is very, very stinky. Um, and they almost, I've been asked if I have been around onions a lot, um, because that's the kind of odor they give off. Or you might walk by our building and you might smell a skunk. But it's not a skunk, it's actually the tamandos. They are very smelly animals. Kelly wants to know, does she like to walk on two legs? She does. Uh, she can't do it for very long periods of time, uh, but she does like to stand up. She gets a lot taller whenever she does that, um, so she kind of feels a little bit bigger, uh, sees her surroundings a little bit better, um, so it's a good way for her to engage. So she does like walking up on her back feet, but she can't do it for very long periods of time. She's offering it now. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon wants to know, how long is her tongue? So it can be about 12 to 16 inches, so it's a pretty long tongue. And Brittany wants to know, why do we feed her baby food? So since they don't have teeth, we have to be very creative on things, trying to find that they would like, they would want to eat. Uh, we try not to give them things with a lot of sugar in it, but since they do like a lot of bugs, a lot of proteins, that kind of falls into that same meat category. So uh, the flavoring of it is what she really likes, plus the texture of it is what she likes. Yeah, and we have a, um, a nutritionist that works here, and so she calculates any type of nutrients in everything that we give our animals to make sure that they're appropriate for um, lineating with what the animals would be eating in the wild too. So believe it or not, chicken flavored baby food <laughs> is nutritionally acceptable to give a tamandua. Mrs. Sider's second grade class wants to know how long do anteaters live? Hi, second grade class. I'm so glad you guys are tuning in. Um, they can live to be, it's about like a, a medium sized dog, so about 15, 20 years old. Um, and she is seven, so she is an, a nice young adult lady. That was a great question. And our last question is from Erin. She wants to know what's the biggest threat to tamandos in the wild? Yeah, so they can range up in the trees and on the, uh, the rainforest floors, as I said. So any type of large predator in Central and South America, so you could find. Um, find jaguars. jaguars and ocelots, harpy eagles, mm -hmm. um, any other sort of large predator from that area. Yeah, it's kind of crazy because they uh, cohabitate with the same area that sloths might be found, and so sloths have the exact same predators as well. Um, so it's kind of interesting to think about the fact that uh, predators are going to go after a variety of different animals that live in the same regions. Just checking out the dry erase markers in there. We gotta make sure she doesn't she get into it though. She's just sniffing them for now. She's probably looking for bugs. <laughs> we pretty much let her um, decide where she wants to go. There's a lot of um, positive uh, enrichment that goes along with letting her explore and have choice and control of her environment as long as we deem it safe. Um, so we are in one of our areas that's used also as an event area. And um, while it's not being in use, she can roam around. Um, so that's why she's running around a lot of chairs and tables, um, things like that. So I'm gonna hold on to this, make sure she's nice and safe while she climbs these chairs. If anybody books an event in the future, maybe you'll smell Isla. <laughs> yeah, we'll have it cleaned by then. That was just a joke, wasn't it? 
She smells that I have some worms. These are actually some wax worms. This is her favorite thing. These are like the candy of insects because they're very fatty. Most animals that eat insects, it's their favorite thing in the whole world. And her tongue is so sticky. It's gonna feel like I have dried Elmer's glue on my hand when I'm done. So I'll have to wash up really good. <laughs> and she does have a prehensile tail. So she was actually holding on with that tail um, while she was leaning forward to you guys at the camera. Um, and a prehensile tail just works kind of like uh, a monkey's tail or a possum's tail. It works like an extra limb. And so um, she can hold on to things just as she would with like a hand. Yeah. One more question from Morgan's first grade class. They want to know why do they stink? Why do they have the smell? Yeah, so sometimes it's attracting mates um, and sometimes they want to ward off any sort of predator predators um, with that horrific smell. They think that maybe if they smell that bad, they're going to taste bad too. <laughs> and a little fun fact, I'm not sure if we have told you guys, but our nickname for her as her keepers is Isla Osita. And the Spanish word for Osita is little bear. So we also call her little bear um, because she has little bear cub looking back feet. Um, so that's just a fun little name that we have for her. And um, I think that's all that we have for you guys today. We were so excited to tell you about our upcoming zoo baby. And um, Isla is such a great mom. So everything's gonna go wonderful and we will keep you guys in the loop as her pregnancy and birth progresses so thank you so much for joining us and have a wonderful day